Welcome to the 22nd part of Spring Boot Kubernetes tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn about persistence volumes, persistence volume claims, and how to use these persistence volumes with pods. In the previous videos, we have seen how we created this uh, Postgres uh, deployment. We have defined the deployment object, and also uh, we have mentioned we are going to use this Postgres image and also we have used uh, config maps and secrets to configure some environment variables. However, here all the data that uh, if you are going to connect to this database and store any data, it is going to be stored in the same uh, container. So by any reason, if the pod uh, on containers got uh, deleted, we will lose the data as well. But usually we don't want to store the data inside the container so that uh, it will be destroyed as and when container cards removed. So we want it to store in a persistence medium that can survive these uh, pod deletions and uh, uh, when you recreate a pod uh, for the same image, you want to use the existing data and continue. So this is where you can use persistence volumes. The concept is very much similar to how we use uh, volumes with Docker. So here we can use uh, persistence volumes for the same purpose. So basically using persistence volumes uh, involves three steps. One is creating a persistence volume. So here if you take a look at uh, Kubernetes documentation of uh, persistence volumes, here you can create a persistence volume type object. Here you can give some name and then you can specify uh, what is the capacity of the persistence volume you are about to create and what type of access modes you are allowing for this uh, persistence volume and then what is the storage class and then um, you can specify where is the actual uh, storage medium exists so it can be a network file system or it can be a hosted file path uh, or it can be any cloud storage like uh, EFS or EBS volumes things like that so this is the first step in order to use persistence volumes you define a persistence volume by specifying various attributes of that persistence volume the next step would be to create a claim for certain amount of storage so here if you see this is a persistence volume of uh, capacity 5 gigabytes let's say for your application you want to have uh, a storage for up to 4 GB okay so you what you need to do is to create a persistence volume claim claiming for 4 GB and also you can specify what uh, type of access modes you want to have so if you scroll down you can see a persistence volume claim so here you define a persistence volume claim and then you are specifying I want to have a persistence volume with so and so access modes and also I want to have this at least uh, 8 gigabytes of uh, uh, capacity of uh, storage and what is the storage class and then you can also specify more uh, selector properties that will try to match against. So what it will do is Whenever you want to have a persistence volume with so and so claim, Kubernetes will try to find a persistence value uh, volume that match this criteria and then it will try to assign it to your pod. Okay, so this is the step two. And then finally, what you need to do how uh, to actually use that uh, volume. So here is a pod definition where you are first specifying as part of the volumes okay i want a volume and which is uh, i want to use it from so and so persistence volume claim and you specify the uh, claim name here and then you mount that volume to your container so here you are going to take that persistence volume mount and mount it to this uh, path so this is the final step that uh, binds your persistence volume to your pod okay so these are the three steps that we usually do to use persistence volumes so now taking this into consideration let us see how uh, we can use the same concept for our uh, postgres database and before going to that let us uh, take a uh, look at few important things here 
Oh, one is most likely you will be using uh, Kubernetes on some cloud uh, uh, platform and there are various drivers that you can use to uh, allocate persistence volumes. If you are on Azure, maybe you want to use Azure Disk or Azure File or even there are for uh, AWS, uh, EBS, Block Store. So things like that, depending on which cloud platform you are using and depending on your choice, you can use one of the driver to allocate the actual uh, physical storage and then there is uh, different classes of um, you can use various plugins depending on the need and also you can see here uh, what type of plugin uh, supports what type of access modes also so here access modes can be uh, read write once uh, which means the volume can be mounted as read write by a single node uh, typically you will have a multi-node cluster and you want to access a uh, certain um, volume only by uh, parts in a specific node so in that case you can go for this or you want to mount some read-only data and that can be used by any number of nodes you can go for read-only many so accordingly you can uh, choose what access modes are suitable for you and then kubernetes will try to allocate uh, the persistence volumes that satisfy your claim uh, needs so here is our uh, current postgres db deployment manifest file right now it is not using any persistence volumes so um, this persistence volume is specifically uh, for working with a postgres database so i'm going to add that persistence volume definition in the same file and as i mentioned earlier within the same ml file you can uh, create any number of uh, different types of kubernetes objects and you can use this separator to define various types of objects so here uh, here we have the deployment and then uh, part definition over here and uh, i have just added two resource uh, types one is persistence volume claim another one is persistence volume so as part of this persistence volume definition what we are saying is we are saying we want to create a uh, object of type persistence volume and i'm giving a name to it and then I'm specifying storage class name uh, to be standard and access mode is uh, read write once and uh, capacity is uh, two gigabytes. And then where does uh, this storage comes from? Uh, because we are working with locally uh, uh, with a kind cluster, we are not actually using any uh, cloud platform or anything like that. So I just wanted to use the simplest option of a host path. So it is going to take uh, whatever the memory that uh, storage uh, I want to use uh, from our host uh, path. So uh, this is the host path that I am uh, going to use for this storage. Okay. So this is the definition of our persistent volume. And then next we created a object of type persistence volume claim and we gave a name to it and then uh, here is the specification what type of a persistence volume i want and what are the attributes i want so here i specified uh, i want to have a persistence volume with storage class as standard and i want to have uh, access mode as read write once and then resources uh, request i am requesting for storage of one gigabyte so here it need not be exactly same. Let us say uh, we have a persistence volume created with the capacity of storage two gigabytes and here we are claiming for one gigabyte and other attributes are also matching. So most likely Kubernetes will try to use this volume uh, when I claim for uh, this one, okay? Because it is matching. Whereas if I request for three gigabytes, right now uh, it doesn't this volume doesn't satisfy because it only has max of two gigabytes and i am requesting for three gigabytes it's not going to use this volume so but here i am trying to use only one gigabyte okay so we have uh, defined a persistence volume and then we have defined persistence volume claim the final step would be i want to uh, mount it uh, into my uh, container okay so finally I'm going to add one more environment variable. Earlier we have uh, environment variables defining Postgres user, password and database name. Now I'm uh, 
adding at the pod container uh, pod level i am adding volume section here i am specifying postgres storage as a volume name and then i am trying to use a uh, persistence volume claim where a claim name is a uh, postgres pv claim which is nothing but the name we gave for our persistence volume okay and here as part of our container definition we are trying to mount this uh, persistence volume with so and so name postgres uh, storage and then we are trying to mount in this path where lib postgresql and data okay so basically we defined our volume and then here we are mounting that volume to our container and then there is another environment variables uh, we can use for our postgres container uh, which is postgres data where to store the postgres data so here we are specifying uh, var lib postgresql data slash postgres data so what does uh, this do let's say we connect to this database and we create tables and we uh, try to uh, store data it is going to try to store the data in this particular file uh, path so where uh, it, this path is nothing but a mounted volume using this volume mounts and uh, where does this come from this is nothing but a postgres volume okay so that is how the relationship uh, so again i am trying to repeat this here we defined volumes and link to persistence volume by specifying the claim name and i gave a logical name to that volume here i am giving postgres stories and then at the uh, container level i am trying to mount this volume with so and so mount path so here i mount that volume in this path and here uh, because our postgres data allow us to specify where to store the data using a environment variable i am specifying this uh, path where it is nothing but mounting to the persistence volume that we uh, just bind it to the container so that is how the link established between our container and then persistence volume okay so that is what we need to do now let us see by applying this uh, change and then see what happens cube ctl apply minus f So now when I apply it, if you go to parts, uh, here we can see there is uh, in lens, we can go and see here uh, persistence volumes. Okay, there is one persistence volume Postgres uh, PV and uh, storage class is standard and the capacity is uh, two gigabytes. And here there is persistence volume claims and here you can see again uh, the namespace and storage class is this and then size is one gigabyte and here you can also see it is bound to this part so if it is not bound it will show as available but it is bound okay so here uh, you can see to which part it bound to the uh, volume so this is how uh, you can store so basically what happens let's say you are uh, you are uh, trying to auto scale or something like that where uh, you can create more number of parts for this postgres or uh, you want to uh, scale down so the containers may get destroyed but still all of them point to the same persistence volume so the data remains always same but if you want to delete uh, persistence volume also you can do that but as you scale up and scale down the containers it doesn't affect the volume the volume stays uh, same and you uh, have the data uh, persisted across these container uh, changes so cool <laughs> yeah um, here we talked about how to 
uh, use this persistence volumes for our Postgres database, but the same process applies for any other uh, processes as well. Let's say in our application, is there any requirement? If there is any requirement, like we upload some file and you want to store it in some uh, persistence volume, or you are generating some reports uh, using some scheduler or something like that, and you want to store it in a persistence medium, you can follow the same uh, pattern like you can create a persistence volume and then you create a persistence volume claim and then you uh, mount it using volumes and volume mounts to your parts and containers and you can map it to a particular path and then you can store accordingly okay so this is how you can use uh, persistence volumes and if you are working with on a cloud platform uh, you need to explore what is the driver you want to use and then what is the uh, uh, particular cloud resource you want to use EBS or EFS uh, Azure disk whatever the technology where you, you want to use uh, basically this administration of uh, persistence volumes is taken care by uh, uh, Kubernetes admins not the developers so that is an administration side of thing cool I think uh, we got good enough understanding how to use the persistence volumes so the next step would be to expose our services like Postgres uh, or API or UI using uh, services so in the next video we'll explore how to use services thanks for watching bye bye